Patients, I felt them. Various times, I felt them. Various times, I felt them. And I say thank you to you and to all those that said welcome back to me. I thank. Oh, I praise you, oh God, I lay the fight. All those in the rear of the church sanctuary, we're going to ask you to please come forward at this time. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. Welcome to all nations, evangelical church, the heavenly body where our vision is knowing Christ and making him known. All Nations is a place for people of all cultural backgrounds to come and fellowship together and to get to know God better. Our model scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Ephesians 5.19, we model, speaking in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. We're asking you to please turn off your cell phones. This year's theme, and it's fast running out, 2017, is abiding in his presence, the supporting scripture, is Psalm 91. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. will be Bible study. Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Or if we have crusade, it will be earlier than that. So come early. It will be prayer meeting. Sunday at 9.30 a.m. is leadership training and Sunday school. And I suppose somebody else should speak on this because I don't know all the details on it. But next Sunday at 4 o'clock, Pastor and Mama Dora celebration of 33 years of marriage and ministry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 33 years of marriage. Praise God. And it will be held here at All Nations Evangelical Church. Get ready for three days of fasting and prayer. Amen. No food or water. Amen. Starting December the 29th, 30th, and 31st. Am I right, Pastor? Amen. Amen. The 29th and the 30th, 30th, we're asking you to join here at the church, and the time will be give, given later. And then on the 31st, of course, we have the end of the year night service, and that time will be given later, so that we can usher in the year 2018. Remember your pledge. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Remember your pledge for 2018 starting in January. Please do not take it from your tithes nor your offerings that you give regularly. The amount is between you and your God. And we will start in, in, in January and end it in October so that you for the next year will pledge again. And please, please, and please, and that goes to me, don't forget our pantry. It needs to be replenished. And when you see Brother Leo Stewart, um, ask him concerning this matter and how you can help. And remember the sick and the shut-ins. Mother Gertrude Liverman is wanted. If there's any others, we would like to know so that we can go visit them. Our mission statement for preparing men and women who would storm the citadel of the devil to do exploits for the Lord. Psalm 60 and 12. As far as I know, these are the notices, but I wish somebody will speak on the um, celebration on next Sunday of pastor's ministry and 
Mama Dora and Pastor's wedding anniversary celebration. I I believe this it, that's it. I it seemed like it was something else on my mind, but God will reveal it and maybe Pastor will let me say it. All right. Thank you for everything. Peace. 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 We thank God for this beautiful day that He has made. Yes. We we'll rejoice and be glad. Yes. The Lord has been so good to us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. He has been so good, and everything that He does is good. Amen. Amen. Everything that the Lord does. Is abundantly good. He's never made a mistake. Has she? No. No, the Lord has never made a mistake. We thank God for all of you here. Sister Mary, we, now we have two Marys in the, in the house. Sister Mary from ANT and Sister Mary who decided to cut her hair because she, you know, she was trying to hide from me. I told her to prepare something that she knew that I was. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My sister Mary from ANT, you have a friend with you today. Um, I didn't, we didn't see her up. What's her name? Oluchi. 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 Welcome to all nations. Oluchi. 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 Yes. Welcome, sister Oluchi. And then, sister, um, I didn't get your name. Yes. Thanks. Oh, hey, why, how could I miss that? <laughs> you know, it takes somebody with the name Faith to drive through, you know, to defy all odds. Yeah. When the church says we are closed, and Faith says, no, I'm going. Mm-hmm. And Faith is here. So we thank God for Faith. Amen. God bless you, Sister Faith. <laughs> and our beloved brother is back. She has been sick for a while. Is that right, brother? Yes. You were sick for a while. You, you had yeah, a, a, yeah, well, uh, well, I still am, but I'm going to be. Amen. 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 But the Lord is with you. Amen. 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 So we thank God that you are here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for this is the day he has made. It's a beautiful day. It's a glorious day. But something has happened also that I want to share with every one of us. Um, but before I do that, I love this song. You see the speakers, even the mic I'm holding, it was donated by our beloved brother, Sena, Sena, uh, Auntie Maggie's son. He donated all these speakers and this mic. He said, Pastor, you need to have a special mic that you alone sing through. So he bought this for the church. Well, this past Thursday, in October, he traveled to go to Togo. Uh, his home hometown to to do some business um, to see his grandma and all that. But Thursday the news came that he has been shot and killed. So the brother Sena is gone to be with the Lord in Togo. It's a very painful one because he was a young man. It was basically actually the pillar of the house, you know, the backbone of the house, and now he's gone. Uh, he's it's so sad. Yeah. Amen. But one good thing is that he died in the Lord. It looked as if all, the, all along he was speaking, he, he knew there was something coming because from his pronouncements, even when he was said he was going, I told him, no, you don't have to go. But he, had, he went. And then from what he has told other people, one uh, lady told him to be careful. He said, well, no, nothing can happen to me except the Lord announce it. Mm-hmm. So, Brother Sena is gone. Amen. Hallelujah. He's gone. So, you and I can see that our life is just very fleeting. You know, he was not sick. You know, he was not sick. I've, I've been preaching about that all the time that you don't have to be sick to work. And this young man has been taking 
in the prime of his life. So at the close of service, I would want as many of us to go and visit with Mama Maggie to uh, comfort her. Uh, this is where she needs her the most. Amen. Amen. So we'll go there at the, at, at the end of the service. Uh, those of us who know there will lead others and we'll go and, and, and spend some time with her in the house before we leave. Amen. Amen. I am going to a city where the streets with gold are laid Hallelujah, where the tree of life is blue, oh um, me, where the roses never fade, in this well we have our trouble. Satan's nest we must evade Hallelujah We'll be free from all temptation Where the roads is never Around them because 
the political climate in Togo is such that when they see you driving a car like that, they, begin, they feel like you know you are you either belong to a certain type of people. So this Okada group came around and they were trying to harass him. So he told his his there were two of them driving. They decided that they should leave that place. You know, so they left. And as they left, they thought the Okada folks would give up on them. They rather they pursued them. And in the pursuit, they, you know, they accelerated. While they were going, I think a nail got into the tire. So they had a flat tire. They pulled over to the side of the road. Uh, when the police saw the melee, what was going on, they also came on the scene. And instead of them being policemen, peace officers who have to go and see what was going on and ask, they unloaded their bullets and killed the two of them in the car, both him and their friend. So apparently they were trying to get rid of all the evidences. Then they discovered that this guy was an American. So that's what we have on hand. And we are going to we are praying that the Lord Himself will you know take control of it. We are in contact with the embassy in Togo, a US embassy, and see we have to pursue this to the very let me pray that the Lord will give grace to do that. So at the close of service, we'll go to see Mama. Uh, Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And the wife, the wife and the children. They left behind three little children. Uh, that's why we have a church. Amen. Amen. Situations like this is where we do what? Step in. Is that right? It's not each for himself and God for us all. We are at one world. But, amen. Today we're going to talk about the tongue. Last week, we talked, we came from the book of Jeremiah 27 and 28. And we found out that in Jeremiah 27 and 28, that during that time of Judah, there were false prophets and there were true prophets. Jeremiah was a prophet of God who will speak the truth. It doesn't matter what it, how, what, where it landed. He spoke the truth. He spoke and was telling them that God had told him to put a wooden collar around his neck to show that the children of Israel were going to go into bondage. That they were going to go under the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. And it gave specific a period of time that they are going to be there for 70 years. And that God himself, God himself, at the appointed time, will, will break their captivity and bring them back. But then, at the very same moment, there was a false prophet who heard this prophecy that God has spoken. But this false prophet, because he was one like some of us in these last days, who want the favor of the people. What the favor of what? The people. So this prophet by name Hananiah also came and said, Thus speaketh the Lord. Jeremiah said, Thus saith the Lord. Hananiah said, Thus speaketh the Lord. That in two years, <laughs> Jeremiah said 70 years. Hananiah said, What? Well, in two years. And they spoke, they, they all spoke in the same year. They spoke in the same year, maybe a few days, and they spoke in the same year. Hananiah said, In two years, God is going to break the yoke and is going to bring Israel back. So he took the yoke of the neck of, the, the, of, of Jeremiah and spoke that that's what God was going to do. And Jeremiah said, Amen. Hananiah turned on his back. Jeremiah started going back. And the Lord said, Jeremiah, I'm not done with you. Go back and talk to Hananiah. So Jeremiah came back and said, Look, from the days of our fathers, whenever the, all the prophecies that came were prophecies of judgment, of what God was going to do, that was going to judge his people, that if any prophet who prophet, prophesied peace, if it came to pass, we knew that it was a true one. <laughs> and the question that I ask all of us is that, was that, are we any better than Israel then, Judah then? 
Are we righteous, more righteous than them? No. We are even worse. We are worse. We have legalized homosexuality. We've shed so many blood. We lie. A lot of things go on in our world today, in this our country. And yet, all that the prophets talk about is, you are going to be rich. You are going to be this. You are going to be that. Oh, we were founded in the name of uh, Christ. And on and on and on and on. Sweet, sweet things telling us. These are people who call themselves also what? prophets. And there are so many of us who flock and walk behind them. They tell us sweet things so we can follow them. That is why the last time I said, if Jeremiah were here today and he had a church, if Jeremiah were here and he has a church, you can count the number of people on his finger because he will not tell us what we want to hear. Every time he mounted a pulpit, he's going to tell us what God says about us. Hello? And on Sunday I said, you have to be very careful who you are listening to. Very careful. Hananiah told them a lie. And so the prophet Jeremiah told Hananiah, look, because you have lied, your lying prophecy has caused these people, it's going to cause people to rebel against God. When we preach messages that people want to hear, we turn their hearts against God. That is called rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. There are so many walking in witchcraft in the house of God. It is so sad that it is in the house of God that we make people act like witches. Because when we tell them what they want to hear, we turn their hearts against God's word. And so they repent. That was what Hananiah said. He said, God, uh, Jeremiah to Hananiah, you have caused the people to rebel. And then you turn their heart against God and you cause them not to trust in God, but to trust in lies. Hello? You see, the human flesh. We always want to be pumped. We wanted. We want to be flattened. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you doubt me, marry and live in a house with a woman or and with, or with a man. The woman wants you to tell her what you want to hear, and the man wants you to tell her what what you want to hear. Is that right? We want to be flattered. Oh, you didn't tell me that I look so beautiful. <laughs> well, Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But we love we love flatteries. We love to be, you know, pampered. But we have to be very careful about that. Because some of those flatteries and some of those pampering are not good for us. Are not good for us. Jeremiah told Hananiah, because of what you have to have done, you will die. And he died. In fact, when the Babylonians came and they took him. He was roasted. He was burned with fire. He died because of his word. Lies. So today we are going to talk about the tongue. Lying. Mm. Hallelujah. We are going to talk about what? The tongue. Open with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 21. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, there's a story been told about a man whose name is Doeg. Doeg. D-O-E-G. Doeg. Doeg was one of the men of Saul, the king of Israel. Doeg was one of the men of Saul. And Doeg had gone to a place called Nob. And when he went to Nob, he was kept there in the house of God by Ahimelech, the priest. Doeg was kept there. Apparently, they were they had to they had to put him on a long fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doeg was there when suddenly there was a knock at the door, and lo and behold, who was here? David. David is being pursued by Saul. 
and he was running for his life. And when he got to that wilderness there, he was hungry. So he went to the house of God to look for food to eat. When he entered in there, David had to sugarcoat his story a little bit. He said, Priest Ahimelech, please, I have been sent by the king on a mission. I am on a mission and it has been fast. And make sure that nobody hears about this thing because the king wants me to keep it secret. But I'm hungry. Do you have any food here? And the king said, well, do I we, the only food we have is the holy bread. Bread is sanctified. It's set apart for God. The only people who eat it are people who have kept themselves pure unto God. David said, oh yeah, we are. The men that are with me, we've not touched any woman for three days, so we are free. And the said, okay. Uh, and uh, said, okay, fine. If that be the case, here is the bread. So they ate to the bread, and they ate. And when they finished, David said, okay, but do you have any... Uh, uh, any arm, um, uh, what you can arm with you because I don't have, I have it. He said, Oh, yeah, well, you know, the only arm that I have with me is that sword that you took from there. That's all we have. So, if you want, you can take it. Now, does this, does it, does this look like somebody, uh, Ahimelech, was encouraging David to do something? David was asking Ahimelech, and David told Ahimelech, The king has sent me. So, whatever Ahimelech was doing. He was doing it thinking that David has indeed been sent by what? The king. That's, that was Ahimelech. He had a good heart towards the king. But there was a man in the a mall called Doeg. Doeg was hearing all that was going on. And when Doeg left and went back to the king, so he saw Jesus in the place and he was saying, hey, all of you over here, I know, I know that you all have are on the side of David. Because none of you is telling me what my son, uh, Jonathan, has, uh, has connived with David to do against me. None of you. So he was telling them, he was co confronted with people around him. Suddenly, the silence broke. Do it. Sir. Oh, no, do it. Sometimes all you and I want some kind of fake favor. Hello? We want to win the favor of what? Some. Do I say, oh, king? It's good that you brought this point up. I was with Ahimelech. And sometimes we embellish the story to make it look so good. I was with Ahimelech. And when I was there, I saw Ahimelech. I really saw Ahimelech. Feel it, feel it. With my own eyes. I saw him, and I saw David also there, and I heard them. Ahimelech gave food to David, and not only that, he even gave him weapon, so he can come and kill you. You see what the tongue does? The tongue. He told the king, and too often we also find ourselves doing the same. We use our tongues to kill. We use our tongues to lie. Hello? The church that you are sitting in, people have used their tongue to drive to drive people away. Because they told them what Pastor people has not what said. And the people bought into it. Some come, they want to start a new church, hello, a church somewhere. So they spread lies and they draw people along with them. That was Doeg. Doeg was to draw men to himself. That's what a lie, the tongue does when the tongue lies. So Doeg lied. And because of his lie, Ahimelech immediately, uh, uh, saw, immediately said, go and call Ahimelech, bring Ahimelech. And don't bring him alone. Bring him along with all the priests. And not with only the priests. Bring him with all his family members. One person is what? Tongue. You see what the tongue does? The tongue sets a whole world on what? Fire. Lies. A whole world on fire. I do egg. Do egg. I don't know which kind of dough lays egg. <laughs> 
Do it. Do it like against David. And you have no fear for the man of God. In that place. So they sent and they brought them all. When Saul asked Ahimelech, he only allowed Ahimelech to make this a brief statement. He didn't even come to ask. No, no, no. Ahimelech said, King, who is as faithful as your servant David? He came to he came telling me about the mission that you have sent him to perform. And he was that faithful. I didn't know all these things that you are talking about. When he finished making statement, King said, save your breath. Hey, kill him. He told the men around him, lay your hands on him, kill him and all the people. And the people stood beside him and said, they feared the king. They feared God. And they will not lay their hands on the anointed of what? Of God. His servants will do it. And when he saw that they won't do it, he turned to Doeg. Doeg the liar. <laughs> you love that name, right? Do, don't, don't, don't name any of your children do it. Mm. I will not be here before you give birth to your children. Don't say, Pastor, don't you tell them do it. Please don't do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So the king said, Do it. See, they won't do it, you do it. Do I even think a second? When you have trained your tongue to lie, you are capable of doing anything. Those who are trained, watch our churches today. Watch our what? Churches today. The moment you begin to craft, begin to craft lies to extort money from the people of God, thereby killing them, you don't stop. You keep on building on that lies. And that is why our churches today have become fat. When I say fat, I'm talking about fat with lies. And we come up with all kinds of strange doctrines to enrich ourselves. Lies. Hello? Lies. Populate our churches with souls based on what? Lies. Well, why are you going to all nations? You know that in all nations the pastor doesn't believe in. Hello? And then you drag it. Then you drag it. Drag it. When did Jesus Christ stop saying, go into the byways and what? Say, go into all nations. He didn't say, come to all nations of the American church. <laughs> but that is the lie of the devil. And we take people from other churches to populate our world. In the name of doing ministry. Hello? That was Doeg. And because of Doeg, Watch it. Ahimelech was killed. His wife was killed. His children were killed. All the priests were killed. And then on top of that, they went to the whole land of Nob, where the priests were killed, all of them. 85 plus more killed them because of one man's one. Do you know what? why you and I are struggling today? Because of one man's life. If Eve took the apple and told his her husband, let us what eat, based on the lies of the devil. She believed the lies of Satan, and when she ate, she gave it to the man. Lie. That is why God hates what? Lies. Doeg lied, and Ahimelech, and all his family, everybody was killed. My beloved. When you and I train our tongues to lie, we wreak havoc on the whole community. The whole community. There's nothing like white lie and black lie. Lie is lie. The most dangerous one is the white lie. <laughs> Why am I saying the most dangerous? Because we are made to think that the white lie is okay. But what is okay with man is not okay with God. All lies are lies. It doesn't matter how you...
color them and paint them. It's lie. And it, it has a very devastating effect on a community, on a people, on a relation. Lying. It may not be discovered today. But the word of God says there is nothing hidden that will not be won. It may not be hidden. It may, it may not be seen today, but it will be seen. God will do what? Certainly what? Reveal it. When David heard this, when they told David, because when they killed all of them, there was one of the children of Ahimelech who fled. And when he fled, he came to David. He fled and came to David. And when he went to David, David told him, his name is Abiata. He fled to David. And they said, I know why you have come. I know what has happened. That from the day I saw Doek, a new problem was brewing. I don't know how, I don't know whether you have felt it, you have experienced it before. But there are times that you come to a place when you see there's something that you say, well, this thing that I've said in the presence of this person, I know something is going to work. Something is going to work. Don't work. Don't work. <laughs> Let's bind the spirit of don't work. <laughs> you know how we, we, make pro, we make prayer requests. Let's bind the spirit of it is the spirit of Satan's spirit, not the work spirit. The work is a man like you and I. Hallelujah. Today I was I was thinking about the gifts. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe and I love the gifts of the spirit. But sometimes when we say, let us all pray in our prayer language so that the devil will not hear. I say, who are you deceiving? In the first place, when you are making a prayer request, did you make it in tongues or you make it in English? <laughs> Beloved, let us pray that the Lord will do this and do that now. But I want you all to pray now so that nobody, the devil will not hear. But you made a request in English or you made a request in Ghana. You made a request in the bed. Say, if you don't want Satan to hear, why do you want him to hear the prayer request? Hello? So you see how we are like, we are deceived. Is that when we speak in tongues, we what do we do? Edify. What do we do? Edify ourselves. We edify what? Ourselves. ourselves. You I edify myself. I don't need Satan to know what I'm praying about. I'm not afraid. Nah, I'm not afraid. If he hears me speaking in gun, okay. I'm not afraid. That will not prevent God from what? Yeah. The deceptive messages that uh, they tell us and we buy into it. So we wonder why we'll be praying that tongue and nothing is really happening because you believe that. If God who gave you your language doesn't understand the language that he gave to you or won't present it, then you know, you ask. Hello? Hello? Now don't get me wrong. I speak in tongues also. Hello? So I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying that let us not exaggerate. Hello? Let us know what? Exaggerate. I blast in tongue and then I divorce my wife and I'm still blasting in tongue and people are following me. I divorce my wife and I remarry and I'm blasting. I mean, what kind of, what, what is that? And it's going on all around. It's going on all around and we, we, we allow that to happen. I do that, I am prophesying and I divorce my wife. I'm prophesying. I am beating my wife. I'm prophesying. I am stealing money. And all the, there are a lot of things that we are doing. We have to be very careful. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry. That spirit that entered into the work is still entering into many today. Don't open your heart for that spirit. Hello? Don't let don't let yourself lose for that spirit because it's a very damaging and destructive spirit. 
When you lie, it's not only you. You affect so many people around you. Is that, a, is that right, Auntie Mary? When you lie, you affect a whole community. In the book, when David heard it, when David heard what was happening, look at David's reaction. Psalm 52. Psalm 52, his reaction. I love it. Psalm 52. He says, Why boastest thou thyself a mischief? Some of us boast ourselves a mischief. We are glad that we are known as liars. Hello? Some of us are happy. It's like, don't regenerate. Those who don't know the Lord. But even there are those who profess to know the Lord and they are champions of that. David says, why boast yourself in mischief? Doeg was boasting himself in mischief. Look at what he did. When all the others around David uh, saw, said, we will not lay our hand on anointing. He was brazen enough to take the sword, slash them. Kill everybody and kill all those in north. And like I can see you walking down the street. Yeah, I am doing. I'm the one who killed. The rest were scared. I killed. You're busting himself. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O oh mighty man? Do it. The goodness of God endures what? Continually. Just because somebody is lying against you, Mama, just because somebody is lying against you doesn't mean that the goodness of God has ceased. Amen. When you and I choose to walk uprightly with God, in lockstep with God, expect lies. Amen. Hello? Amen. Expect lies and it will be floods of them. Floods of lies. Floods of lies. Floods of lies. Don't fall for it. Because the way you react to the lies is going to determine the victory of the enemy. Mm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief? Oh, mighty man, the goodness of God endures continually. God's goodness endures in spite of the lies. God's goodness what? Do I thought that he has cut out and there was nothing going to happen anymore. But God's goodness will continue. Thy tongue devises mischiefs like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Are you all with me, children? I need you to listen, though. You are our future generation. Listen, please. Lying is not good. Lying on your tests is not good. Cheating. When you're cheating, it's lies. Because what you're putting there is not what is, is the, you are looking at somebody else's paper. You are lying to that. It's not good. Lying and cheating are twin brothers. Hello? Mama said, steady. And when you saw Mama go to the kitchen, you said doing something else. Took your cell phone, look, and you went. FaceTime. As soon as Mama, <laughs> and what did you say? S plus Y? As if you were FaceTime, you're talking to a person about your, your work, but you knew what you were talking you are lying. Mm. Hello? You are what? Lying. It's not good. God doesn't like that. Thou lovest evil more than good. Liars love evil more than what? Good. Lying is not righteousness. It's evil. Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Lying rather than speaking what? Righteousness. Lying is not good. Lying is not what? Good. The truth hurts. The truth brings momentary, you know, people, you know, those who love lie will, will avoid you. 
but let it be so. When they move away, God is closer to you. Speak the truth. Hello? Speak what? The truth. And be a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ than a friend of those who sit in the council of scholars. <coughs> Don't you know that the world loves that? Start speaking the truth and see if Hollywood will invite you. <laughs> Speak the truth and even see if they will invite you to the White House or to the Congress or to any place. No, no, no. They want you to shade it a little bit. The world doesn't want truth. Thou lovest all devouring words. Oh, thou deceitful of tongue. The tongue is so deceitful. In the book of James, it says, no one has been able to tame the tongue. We've tamed all kinds of animals. Any lion to tame them. But the tongue hard to tame. It's hard to tame. The tongue. We'll come to the book of James. We'll see that. We'll be in conclusion. It says, Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. Mm. Hello? Mm. Don't ever think that your lives are going to continue forever. God will destroy you at one point. God shall dis likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. See that? David is talking about go, do it. Do it. Do it. Don't think that what you have done is going to be forever. That you are going to live forever. I've always said this. 